Shalom Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tonight we're going to be looking at a couple of subjects here uh, that I wanted to bring to your attention. One, of course, is Turkey. Uh, the prime or the president there, President Erdogan of Turkey, uh, in one of the latest articles, has a right to conduct ops in Syria elsewhere uh, to protect itself from terrorists, is what he is stating. Now, it's just kind of interesting that he's making such bold assertions here. And I wanted to bring this to your attention also in light of the fact that uh, I stated early on, once Erdogan began to uh, really put his boast out there, the way that he was doing, that it wouldn't be long before someone would actually claim that he is the Antichrist. And of course, those, those uh, candidates are already out there uh, proclaiming exactly that, that Erdogan is the Antichrist that is expected to be the Muslim Mahdi. Uh, but nonetheless, it is false, but clearly what you're seeing, why you're seeing so much rhetoric from uh, uh, Tayyapit uh, Erdogan is because the Vatican wants him to appear to be the Antichrist, the Muslim Mahdi that unites the Muslim world. But the problem is he will never bring about a one world religion. He will never bring about a one world government. He will never bring about a one world uh, economy system and he can never bring about a new world order. But they will not stop the Vatican from using this man as their detractor and making it look like that he is the Antichrist. This Mr. Erdogan, who is trying to unite the entire Arabic world to turn the, uh, the whole area into a battlefield and eventually go against Israel. Of course, they're claiming to be uh, making peace agreements with Israel right now, but even Erdogan has admitted the only reason they're doing it is to be able to help the Palestinians. So it is the candidate now of choice that they're uh, beginning to, to lift this man up. And I won't call the names of the different evangelicals right now that are calling this man an antichrist. Uh, but clearly they are wrong in this and it will come to fruition only in time, uh, to say the very least there. Now I'd like to take you on another story here as well happening in Israel. Uh, this is the, the Duma suspect that speaks out from prison about torture, uh, Imram bin uh, uh, Aliel, and very serious situation that's going on there. Let me kind of blow this up for you so you get a little bit better view of what's being said here on the screen. Uh, but it's concerning to us as well because this man right here uh, accused of burning this house that caused the death of a small child. Now the death of the small child is very much a saddening thing regardless of whose child it would be. It is certainly a, a sad situation nonetheless. But I believe from the beginning that this would be framed uh, situation and that it was never an Israeli that did it in the first place. But I do think also that uh, when the fire was set and more than likely by the Palestinian uh, extremists themselves, no one expected that there would be a child at home. I do believe that. I don't think anybody did it intentionally as far as that. They were just trying to find a way to blame the Jews for something there. And it may not even be the Palestinians that did it. Could it be somebody in the government trying to make it look good? Someone that favors the Palestinians trying to get the uh, Palestinian state fully underway. As we've seen recently released in Hillary Clinton's emails where she was encouraged to uh, bring up the women into protest to force them back to the table there. You know, it says here that the, uh, the, uh, the activist Imran bin Yalayel, main uh, suspect in the Duma arson and murder, has released a special recording in which he describes the undergoing torture at the hands of the Israeli security agency uh, Shin Bet uh, or Shabak. And he says here, I didn't sleep for several nights and then they took me to the preliminary sentencing. After returning from the hearing, they again took me for questioning. They interrogated me about the night and told me, let's say that tomorrow at this time, there, this will be an emergency room, he, des they, uh, he describes. He chose not to answer the questions and was then threatened by the interrogators. They yelled at me a lot, screamed at me until all of my clothes were covered in spit. They threatened me a lot and told me that, that they can do whatever they want to me because I'm alone. They told me that I'm stuck. They cuffed my arms tight behind my back. They sat me down on a chair with a shoulder towards the backrest and tied to the floor. They forced my legs behind the chair's legs. Just sitting in that position was impossible. And after a minute, at most, I simply fell backwards, he added. 
Bengalayal then explained that one of the interrogators grabbed me by the shirt and told me, I'm going to be your nightmare. We will drink your blood through your ears and all sorts of similar threats, screaming shouts, beatings, and slaps. They continued torturing me all through the questioning, all under threat and all with beatings. They made me all sorts of exercise. They stood me up with long cuffs behind my back, always with my legs shackled. They put me in positions that I was bent over. Uh, the lawyers of uh, Itmar bin Gavir was stated in response to the recording that the chilling evidence on tape accompanied by the fact that until this moment the ISA prosecutors have not been willing to give us the interrogation tapes from these hours and days teaches us that bin Yalel was tortured and gave forced confession that is not permitted under Israeli law. He added, it is time to establish an investigative investigatory committee to look into the torture and gave permission to use torture. The violence against Ben Yalel is continuing. And in fact, all of those arrested in this case, including those who have been uh, directly charged with what happened in Duma, continue to undergo violence from the prison service and the ISA. They are located in separate wings, isolated from the world, and are not even allowed to speak on the phone. Friends, this is something that has got to be dealt with. And if you have know of anyone that has any pull whatsoever with the Israeli government, I definitely encourage you to reach out to them and put pressure on them and let them know that this is totally wrong. They are doing this and trying to make this man an example uh, of something that he never did in order to be able to get... Uh, the, the Israelis back to the negotiating table. Whatever the case that they're doing, they're doing it intentionally. And it's a crime against humanity. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.